Creatine is traditionally thought to be a muscle building supplement. However, many scientists are only now beginning to realize that creatine also affects the brain. In this video, I'm going to explain to you what happens to your brain when you take creatine and what's the optimal dose for the benefits. Creatine is an amino acid derivative made by the liver and pancreas from arginine, glycine, and methionine. However, you can also get creatine very easily from supplements. 95% of that creatine is in skeletal muscle and two-thirds of that is stored as phosphocreatine. Phosphocreatine is what shuffles ADP back into ATP, the energy currency of cells, during rising energy demands, which then enables muscles to contract. Creatine supplementation increases the availability of phosphocreatine, which supports ATP resynthesis. That's why there are hundreds if not thousands of studies showing creatine helps with exercise performance. When it comes to the brain, then creatine maintains intracellular ATP inside the brain. That's highly relevant because the brain consumes about 20% of all the body's energy. Because of that, the brain contains a lot of creatine, not as much as skeletal muscle, but still a lot relative to the brain's weight. So creatine in muscles helps muscles to perform better. Because the brain consumes a lot of creatine and energy, you would expect that to happen with the brain as well. That's true, creatine appears to improve memory and cognition. In 2003, people were given 5 grams of creatine per day for 6 weeks. After the protocol, their working memory and intelligence using certain tests increased. This was confirmed by another 2007 clinical trial on elderly people who saw that 5 grams of creatine 4 times a day for 2 weeks improved memory recall significantly. A 2022 meta-analysis of 8 randomized controlled trials found that creatine supplementation improved memory in healthy individuals. They saw greater effects in older adults, 66 to 76 years of age, with an average dose of 2.2 to 20 grams a day. However, all age groups saw improvements in memory performance from creatine supplementation compared to placebo. So it looks Looks like creatine can improve memory and cognitive function. Slight memory dysfunction and slower processing speed is part of natural aging and it's not necessarily a sign of Alzheimer's. Forgetting your keys doesn't mean that you have Alzheimer's but it could mean that your brain is low in certain nutrients, such as B12 and possibly creatine. Dementia, also called major neurocognitive disorder, refers to a set of symptoms in which cognition and memory decline to a level that starts disturbing daily life. Dementia can have multiple causes, with the most common being neurodegeneration caused by Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's and other neurodegenerative conditions are characterized by either physical deterioration of the brain or accumulation of toxic proteins like beta amyloid and tau protein. There are no clinical trials looking at creatine's effects on Alzheimer's disease yet, but it shows potential in maintaining brain bioenergetic flux, which is impaired in Alzheimer's disease. During Alzheimer's, creatine kinase activity that converts ATP to ADP is reduced by up to 86%. This means that Alzheimer's disease is characterized by low phosphocreatine levels. Parkinson's disease is characterized by the loss of dopaminergic neurons, which leads to movement issues, resting tremor, and loss of muscle. A 2007 randomized trial did find that Parkinson's patients who took creatine and did resistance training had greater strength than those who did resistance training without creatine. That's not surprising and we know that from studies done on other people already. However, creatine has observed neuroprotective effects. In a 1999 study on mice, creatine attenuated neurotoxicity caused by a toxin called MPTP, which produces Parkinsonism. Creatine protected against the loss of neurons in the brain of these mice. As of now, we just don't have any clinical trials of creatine on Parkinson's patients yet. The last neurodegenerative disease I want to talk about is Huntington's disease, which is primarily an inherited disorder characterized by neuronal death, involuntary movement, loss of speech, dementia, and depression. In animal models, creatine delays the onset of these symptoms and improves some symptoms of motor control. However, in a mouse model of Huntington's, supplemental creatine in the diet has also been seen to extend lifespan. In this 2000 study, they found that mice on a 1% creatine diet lived 9.4% longer than untreated mice. Those on a 2% creatine diet lived 17.7% longer, and those on a 3% creatine diet lived only 4.4% longer. So it looks like that 1-2% to creatine diet yielded the longest life extension in these mice with Huntington's. This might indicate a sweet spot in how much creatine is beneficial. What we're talking about here isn't life extension beyond what's normal, but rather the increased survival with Huntington's disease that usually shortens lifespan. So pretty much these mice lived longer with Huntington's than normally. In humans, 
humans, a 2006 double-blind placebo-controlled study found that 8 grams of creatine a day for 16 weeks was well-tolerated and safe. Those getting creatine also saw a reduction in markers of DNA damage compared to placebo. Another 2010 clinical trial observed that patients getting creatine saw a reduction in the rate of brain deterioration. So overall, it looks like creatine can improve some symptoms of neurodegeneration, especially motor control and physical function. But there aren't enough clinical trials yet, so we can't make any conclusions. I want to continue with an interesting use of creatine which is helping with traumatic brain injury or TBI. TBI is an injury to the head by concussion when you hit your head. After a TBI, creatine content in the brain decreases because of the injury and the brain needs energy to do everything. The energy demand during injuries rises especially high. There are a few pilot studies looking at children who suffered from TBI and creatine supplementation. They show that 0.4 grams per kilogram per day of creatine supplementation decreases the duration of post-traumatic amnesia, hospital stay, and improves cognitive and neurophysical aspects within three months. The same dose for six months has also been seen to prevent traumatic headaches, dizziness, and fatigue from the TBI in children and adolescents. Creatine administration immediately after a TBI also reduces markers of oxidative stress in rats, but it didn't protect against seizures. So creatine is one of those supplements you could immediately take after a concussion. What about taking creatine prophylactically for concussions? In a 2000 study, they injected mice with creatine at a dose of 3 mg per gram per day for 3 to 5 days and then exposed them to an experimental traumatic brain injury. Results showed that creatine reduced the extent of cortical damage by 36% in mice and by 50% in rats. Again, there are no clinical trials in humans, but so far creatine looks promising for TBI. Next, creatine also shows promise for mental health and wellness. That's because brain energy and creatine stores are disrupted in mood disorders and depression. In a 2012 randomized controlled trial, 5 grams of creatine for 8 weeks enhanced the effectiveness of SSRIs in women with major depressive disorder. Dietary creatine intake is inversely correlated with depression. The higher the creatine intake, the lower the prevalence of depression among US adults. Lastly, I want to talk about the effects of creatine on sleep demand, because that's highly regulated by your brain. Because the brain is such an energy-hungry organ, it also needs time to recover, which happens primarily in your sleep. Interestingly, creatine supplementation may reduce sleep demand and sleep pressure. Supplementing 5 grams of creatine 4 times a day for 7 days before an experiment involving 36 hours of sleep deprivation has been shown to improve cognitive and psychomotor performance compared to placebo. In elite athletes, taking 100 mg per kilogram of creatine counteracts the harmful effects of sleep deprivation on skill performance. So taking creatine either before or or immediately after sleep loss can counteract some of the loss in performance that happens with sleep deprivation. If you've taken creatine, you might notice that you either sleep less or you get away with less sleep. That's because of the same idea that your brain has higher creatine levels, which then lowers the sleep pressure. That can be either a good thing or a bad thing depending on the situation. The problem here is that creatine can cause insomnia in some people because of this reason. So if you react negatively to creatine and it keeps you up, then you might want to try taking it only in the morning. And you want to increase your sleep pressure by exercising during the day. Alright, let's bring it all together. Creatine is no longer considered a muscle building supplement. Because there's so much old and new research showing that it has benefits on the brain as well. It's not going to prevent or treat neurodegenerative conditions because there's currently no evidence for that. However, creatine does appear to improve memory function and it can promote cognitive performance. How much creatine are we talking about? In the studies, the optimal dose is 100 milligrams per kilogram per day. Check out my new book, The Longevity Leap, that walks you through 24 chapters on all different aspects of aging and longevity. You'll learn about nutrition, exercise, blood work, and supplements. Get The Longevity Leap from Amazon. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure to click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.